the storm has now arrived. Hey guys, the Storm Boy 13. Um, I'm going to do something completely random today. Um, today, in this video, I'm, for, well, I'm going to mention about the helm wind, something that's happened in an island. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it or describe it, but that's what I'm going to mention about. And I thought, you know what, I just feel like it. I'm going to do some weather questions. Um, so, come with me and um, might, I might be able to learn something and you might be able to learn something as well and I just need to let you know something and I am extremely sorry I usually do monthly weather things like January, February, March of uh, UK weather and I'm a nutcase I've accidentally deleted the April 2017 weather videos before they can be uploaded this was because I had to make space and unfortunately I didn't think to, I forgot to uh, check um, to sort the video out and I accidentally deleted them before um, so sorry guys but there's no UK weather April 2017 I'm afraid to be fair it wasn't a really dramatic month anyway um, so but I'll so I can't do anything about it so I'm really sorry but you know what let's not drag on about it today we're gonna answer some weather questions and even learn a bit about the helm wind so come with me okay so um, if you're not, if you don't live in the UK, you might not know, but I oh will. But I want to tell you a bit about Cumbria's helm wind. I think that's how you say it. So did you know there is only one named wind in the UK which only blows in Cumbria, and that's and it's at its fierce this time of year from late April, early May. It's called the helm wind, and it's just a blustery northeasterly which we've got at the moment that blows down the western slope of the Crossfell, the highest peak in the Penny Hills. So Wednesday morning, it was blowing at over 60 miles per hour, according to the weather station at Great Dunfell, uh, which is up at a height of 847 metres. The name helm wind may come from a bank of cloud which forms above the hills like a helmet when the helm wind is blowing. The wind is powerful enough to knock over walkers and can last for days. We've been having this helm wind for nearly a week. Um, the Eden Valley below has its own helm wind, and this is accompanied by a long roll of cloud called the helm bar. So one of our weather watches, I'm going to show you now, captured this great shot of the helm bar. I think it was Tuesday evening. Um, meteorologist Gordon Manley carried out research into the helm wind and his beautiful clouds in 1937. He found that the wind rushed down like water pouring over a waterfall before the air moved up and down in the valley like a standing wave. So there you go. I might have discovered the helm wind. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it was just in Cumbria. But there's another bit I'm going to show you now. I'm on a website right now and I'm going to put the link, and I will remember to put the link in the description, and it is called weatherquestions.com. There are hundreds of them on there, and there's no way I'm going to be able to answer all of them in that space of time. So I'm only going to answer about five of them today. So let's have a look. So, here it is, and again, as I, like I said, I'll put a link in the description of weatherquestions.com. I know it's American, but that's, I don't really care. So, hmm, which one should I choose? Hmm, let's pick Anvil Clouds. Alright, so, uh, it's a slightly random choice. Ah, oh, yes, good choice. So, which is an Anvil Cloud? I'll read it out to you, because it's better that way. Anvil clouds, I know a little bit about them anyway, which are mostly, okay, I know quite a bit, which are mostly composed of ice particles. Uh, they are formed in the upper parts of thunderstorms. They get their anvil shape from the fact that the rising air in thunderstorms expands and spreads out 
as the air bumps up against the bottom of the stratosphere. So that is because the air in the stratosphere is warmer than the rising air in the anvil, uh, and so prevents the relatively cooler anvil air from rising any farther. You will often see streaks of snow called verdure falling at the edges of anvils. This verdure evaporates as it falls through the relatively drier surrounding the upper parts of the thunderstorm. Now this is an interesting fact. A snowstorm in summer, because the upper layers of the troposphere are so cold, anvil clouds often contain heavy snow which melts as it falls into warmer air below turning into rain. So it is estimated that about 50% of the rain produced by the average thunderstorm originates as ice and snow, even in the tropics. So there's one. Okay, so I'll do four more. So, uh, which one? Hmm... Let's try convection. So, what is convection? I think that's how you say it. Uh, convection has several related meanings in weather, but it always involves rising air. It usually refers to moist convection, which where the excess water vapour in rising air parcels condenses to form a cloud. Uh, the heat related through this condensation can help to sustain the convection by warming the air further and making it rise still higher, which causes more water vapour to condense so the pr process feeds on itself. But uh, convection can also be dry, as it occurs on a sunny day over the desert or in more humid regions early in the day, before the convection has become strong enough to form clouds. The sun warms the ground and conv convective air currents help to remove the excess heat from the surface, Dry convection also occurs during the day, even when clouds are not forming, you just can't see it. So there's some interesting facts. It's making the earth livable. Convection, both dry and moist, help to make the earth livable by removing excess heat from the surface, which is where most of the solar energy is absorbed by the earth and transporting it high into the atmosphere. It has been calculated that without convection, the average surface air temperature on the earth would be about 125 degrees Fahrenheit rather than the current 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So what goes up must come down. And all of this air rising through convection must be balanced by an equal amount of sinking air elsewhere. These clouds represent vertical circulation systems involving rising air where the visible cloud forms and sinking air around the clouds. So that's another one too that you learned about. Alright, what's the third one? Uh, I might go to the D section because they're all really interesting. Um, let's pick... Oh. Let's pick degree days. So, heating degree days and cooling degree days are quantitative measure of the heating and cooling needs of building space upon daily temperatures. So both heating and cooling degree days are with reference to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. If the average of a given day is high and low temperature is 65 degrees, then there are no zero heating or cooling degree days. So if the average temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit for a given day, then there are 72 minus 65 equals 7 cooling degree days. So if the average temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, then there are 65 minus 50 equals 15 heating degree days. You can add up the degree days for any time period, say the month of January, and get an idea of how much heating was required to heat buildings. The graphic seen above shows an estimate of the average heating degree days in thousands over the course of an average year. Um, so the energy uh, industry pays attention to heating and cooling degree days as a way to easily and quickly estimate energy usage, which then helps to help predict energy prices. So I'll just show you a little image. Um, so it said thousand, so just imagine that. Yeah. Not too surprising further north you go. Oh, I'm going to pick the last one, and I'm kind of curious to pick them. Sorry, guys. Uh, but I will send you the link if you want to have a look at it. What causes lake effect snow? So... So this is uh, lake effect snow. So this is cold air mass at the top, warm water at the bottom, and then yeah. So what causes lake effect snow? Lake effect snow is caused when a very cold winter air mass flows over the relatively warmer waters of a large lake. Intense evaporation from the lake surface under these conditions forms convective clouds that cannot contain all of this water and some of it falls back to the surface as snow. Lake effect snow showers often organise themselves into bands or lines only a few miles across, with abrupt edges to the falling snow. 
the organization since lines is the result of wind shear, a change in wind speed or wind direction uh, with height. If there is no wind shear, then the snow showers organize into individual snow shower clouds. The following satellite image shows lake effect snow bands flowing off of Lake Superior Lake Michigan. Uh, because lake effect snow occurs downward of lakes, one location can receive large snowfall accumulations, while another location just a few miles away receives little or no snow. Buffalo, New York is probably the most famous location for receiving large amounts of lake effect snow. Um, the convective clouds of lake effect snow showers do not reach the heights attained by thunderstorms, with tops seldom exceeding 12,000 feet in altitude compared to 40,000 60,000 feet for thunderstorms. This is because cold winter air masses are quite stable, and warm lake waters are able to destabilize the atmosphere only over a limited depth. So the largest lake effect snow accumulations typically occur early in winter before the lake waters have cooled very much. The warmer the lake water, the greater the rate of evaporation, and so the greater the supply of water vapor to the snow shower clouds. Once the lake surface cools to near 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the late winter, the lake effects snow mechanism weakens considerably and the lake surface freezes, lake effect snow activity stops altogether. So there's one interesting fact about it. So the record snowfall in Buffalo, uh, lake effect snow band coming off of Lake Erie during December 9th, 10th, 1995, dropping 30 inches of snow in just 24 hours, power lighting the city. So that's, um, so that's it for this video. As I said, I will send you the link, weatherquestions.com, um, and you can have a look about it, and you might learn something new. So I've answered some weather questions, um, and of course you learned, about the, learned a bit about the helm wind in um, Northern Ireland. Alright guys, um, thanks for watching, give it a like, comment and subscribe, more videos to come soon, and um, I'll be back soon. Storm is now out, and um, hope you learned something new. I always like to teach you something about weather. <laughs>